So I'm sitting here with my family in East Africa, uh, testing out this microphone here for the first time. I've been carrying it around for, um, I think, almost two years in a, in, in a suitcase, and I haven't had time to even to take it out of the packages. I've got a daughter uh, playing Hungry Hungry Hippo in the corner, and uh, my wife has a bit of flu, and she's made some special herbal remedy out of garlic and ginger, as they say uh, in East Nasale. Africa. Tengewezi. Nasale. Oh. Nasale. And it's nice. Honey. Asale is honey. So I thought I would test because this weekend and our our uh, son, our son here, Ian, is cooking. You, I don't know if you can hear the sound of the cooking. In the background, he's cooking dinner for us. So this is an informal test of my little webcam camera and my microphone, which is new to me, though I've been banging it around in my suitcase. But I thought, um, as I prepare and test this in advance for our seminar, by the way, we intend to do a seminar with some young people from the area here about family, life, sexuality, and uh, the nature of... Uh, those things, it's a big subject, but a little, maybe three-part seminar relating to how those things relate to a biblical worldview and what the Bible says about the rules around sexuality, family, and so many of those uh, areas under which the young people in particular are under direct assault nowadays. So that's why I'm testing this equipment. So uh, I've written in a little blue book here. I have this blue book that um, someone gave me that I use when I'm at work in the oil field to jot down ideas as they come to me. When I don't have time to really write extensively, I make notes and try to remember to talk about certain things. So I think as I test, let, I'd like to talk about briefly NDEs, near-death experiences. And some of the ones being collected, especially promoted on YouTube and in popular media, are usually being, there are others that are collected and other books that have been written, and I'm, I'm no expert in the subject, but there are other collections of near-death experiences that involve hell, some that involve heaven, some that can be reconciled to a biblical or Christian uh, worldview but others that cannot be reconciled at all, that are, are in fact uh, hundreds and hundreds or, or thousands that are directly contradictory, directly contradict the idea of hell, of the reality of an eternal punishment. As Jesus, quoting the prophet Isaiah, said, the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. So the idea of judgment and the idea of um, a punishment, not popular at all in the um, uh, post, as they say, the postmodern or post-Christian worldview. I don't know. It's not my worldview. I am a traditionalist Christian, and I believe the Bible to be the Word of God. It's literal when it's literal. It's figurative when it's figurative. It's historical when it's historical. I believe it to be within the rules and confines of the genre. The truth. The truth. I don't take the uh, symbolic parts of the Bible, literally, literally the the apocrypha, um, uh, the apocalypse rather, of Saint John. The 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 the, 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 the revelation of Saint John is written in apocalyptic uh, imagery. But the what the symbols symbolize that becomes the question within the apocalyptic genre. So given that it is symbolic. What it symbolizes is true. I believe scripture is God-breathed and is the word of God. Now, there are many of these NDEs that people, and also the people who have taken um, psychedelics, like LSD or magic mushrooms, and all, they have in common a report that I've heard over and over and over in these testimonies, which is that the um, experience is more vivid, seems anyway, more vivid, more real than real. So as these people are experiencing what they perceived or they remember to have been more real than 
in some cases, anything they've ever experienced in their so-called conscious or waking life to the point where the waking life compared to the near... Now, I'm not talking about drugs. I'm talking about the near-death experience of people, in many cases, who have never even touched um, drugs, uh, uh, certainly not psychedelics. So these NDEs ex are experienced by people, and they're experienced with such a level of vividity and such a, um, a sense of reality that it makes the normal, rea what we normally call waking conscious reality, seem like a dream to those people. More real, um, these near-death experiences are more real than ordinary everyday life to these people. Now, I've had a little experience with this. My arm was bit by a dog. You can see the scars. And that was a very vivid experience. It went on for many long, you know, the better part of 20 minutes. No one was there to help me. It was a very large Akita, and I was bleeding out. And I won't go into the whole story now, but, but I cried out to God. And that trauma, it was, I didn't die my heart didn't stop beating. I didn't lose consciousness. But I was full of adrenaline, and it was very, very vivid, much more vivid than my everyday life. Um, also, I've experienced when I was in jail in 2010 for rebuking Elton John. I was in Fulton County Jail. And at that time, I experienced a um, at least twice lucid dreams and my lucid dreaming, I can say, was vivid and seemed real at a level that was more real, you know, more vivid than my ordinary wake, waking experience. Okay, now, that's not an NDE, yeah. but I, I did feel that that was vivid, unusually vivid, beyond my usual experience of reality and those lucid dreams. And I had heard... In some radio interview, I think, uh, before that, uh, that the way that sometimes lucid dreams seem so much like reality that, you know, one might wonder, am I awake or not? And I heard that one of the ways that you can ascertain whether you are indeed awake or not is to look at the digits, you know, your fingers or, or your toes, within the dream, what you think might be a dream, look at your fingers, and if you're in the lucid dream, you'll have the wrong number of digits. And sure enough, I remembered that, and I said, all right, I think I'm lucid dreaming. And I looked down, and sure enough, I had the wrong number of digits. It's interesting to me, now that was 2010, now AI, I don't know if you can hear me over Hungry Hungry Hippo, but nowadays AI is making a similar mistake, at least the versions of AI that uh, Meta and uh, others are releasing to us now in uh, early 2024 and the um, end of 2023, they are, when you ask them to make pictures, they tend to get feet and numbers of fingers wrong. I don't know if there's any connection, but that also is what my mind or my brain, I don't know uh, which was doing it, but I don't think the mind is the brain, by the way. But that uh, error that otherwise everything was apparently perfect except you could fly and I could also in the in the in the uh, lucid dream I could go back to memories from childhood instantly and they were vivid like like as real or more real than when they happened so that's the similarity without going further into that th that's the similarity that I saw with um, the closest thing I've ever experienced to things I've ever experienced to NDEs were the, the, the dog mauling incident and um, w where I lost a good chunk of my right forearm and also my two experiences in 2010 lucid dreaming while in jail. Having said that, I've never had a true NDE, but many of the people who have had uh, NDEs uh, r report Coming away, having learned lessons that are that call into question the veracity of the, the wow. biblical message or the doctrine of hell, and that also call into question 
or directly contradict the doctrine of the possibility of eternal damnation or a final judgment to come. And I want to suggest, as I close this video, and I'm going to see how my how my little camera does. I'm not expecting much out of the camera, but especially what to check this um, microphone setup. Um, I want to propose, I want to suggest a solution to that contradiction. Let me suggest a possibility. Suppose the Bible, for those of you who are have a question. I don't have any question. I'm convinced the Bible is true. Suppose the Bible is true. And yet people are experiencing in near-death experiences uh, visions of entities, uh, feelings of love, connections with what appear to be dead relatives that they knew, others that they didn't know. A sense of familiarity, a sense of, of truth, a conviction of truth, a conviction of reality that... Um, is very powerful and very convincing. Now, I want to suggest that if those things contradict the Bible, should we re-examine the Bible? Or, or, is it just possible? I'd like to use an analogy. A fly fisherman, I'm not one, I'm not a fly fisherman, but I know enough about fishing and what fly fishermen do to know that they tie the flies sometimes to such a level of precision to match the time of year, the time of the hatch, the cyclical seasons of the hatch, the most intricate patterns that the particular fish recognize that are hardwired into the brain, the consciousness or the brain of the fish. And I'm not trying to um, distinguish between consciousness and uh, the brain right now. I, that's above my head, but somehow the patterns of the particular hatch are hardwired into the fish. And the fly fisherman is enough higher than the fish. He's enough higher of an order of creature that he's able to, um, if he's skillful, a skillful fly fisherman is able to either purchase or tie Someone's able to tie those ties so that they match the pattern of what is in the, um, the archetype, if you will, of a fish, if the fish have archetypes. Uh, what, what is telling the fish, this is food. This is what I know to be food. Why could not beings that are as much higher than, that are not God, okay, not the God of the universe or the creator, but are any more than we are, the creator of a, of a fish. I'm not, the fly fisherman cannot create a fish, but he's higher than the fish, like we're higher than ants. We're higher than bacteria, in some sense. And why, so why could not uh, an order of angelic or an order of otherworldly creature, which is of an, of an order and of a nature as much higher than us, or perhaps more, as we are then the fish or an insect. Why could such a one, if he wanted to catch us away from God and away from the truth of his word, why could he not create a facsimile of or a copy of or a presentation of love, truth, and create the wow us with such a, a show of of emotional and as the apostle said even if an angel of light in other words such a show of light such a show of uh, t such a titillation of images and such a uh, vivi vividity of colors and emotionally complex presentation why could he not lure us with something that was more beautiful than and more seemed more true okay than even our uh, waking lives. Like imagine, you know, a, a young man who's just coming into puberty who sees sexually titillating images. And he doesn't have any, he doesn't know what a whore is. He doesn't know what pornography is. He could, he can, within his heart, it's touching archetypes. It's showing him something very alluring, like more powerful than he's ever seen before. And he can be seduced, like the fish is seduced. 
And I'm suggesting that the people in the NDEs, I'm not doubting their testimony, I'm not calling them liars, I'm suggesting there may be orders of beings as much higher than me and you as we are than fish. And that those beings, if we're open to it, if we're open to it, if we don't test the spirits, if we don't call upon the name of Jesus, if we don't discriminate, yes, I said, dis ooh, the bad word I'm not supposed to say. If we don't discriminate, exercise our powers of discrimination. Why do I not eat food if I find it's been contaminated with feces? Even if the food looks beautiful, but I learn that it's been contaminated with feces. I exercise my powers of discrimination, not unjust. Discrimination has become equivocated with unjust discrimination. I'm talking about a man of discriminating tastes, right? Using your native powers of discrimination. Now, if you're a man in Christ, if you know the Lord, and God generally, usually doesn't wow us with light shows. Okay, Bethlehem, the angels got quite a, sh uh, the shepherds got quite a show from the angels. It happens, but it's not God's normal method of operation. It's usually a still, a still small voice because God is not competing with the devil. God could win in this competition, but God's not interested. God, as Jesus told the woman at the well, the Lord desires worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Not because they've been wowed by light shows, okay? There's plenty of that, and there's a time and a place for beautiful... Heaven is a wonderful place, as the children's song I used to sing, was singing with my daughter recently, says, filled with glory and grace. But if God just lures us in with that kind of... Um, visual and brain and consciousness stimulation just overwhelms us with beauty everybody's going to follow him but he wants those people who love him with all their heart their mind their soul their strength who exercise their powers of discrimination and use their minds and trust him even when someone appears to bring a uh, message that is much, much more alluring and vivid and impressive, like a magician. Okay, but what if, I'll end it there, what if the people in these near-death experiences are being lured in by angels that are able to put on such a show that you say, wow, this has got to be the truth. Because... Um, because I've never seen anything so beautiful or anyone so beautiful. I've never felt such acceptance. I've never felt such love. And they come back. The people resuscitate them. Their heart was down. Then now they go forth as apostles of near-death experiences. And they tell everyone, don't worry about hell. Don't worry about judgment. There's no such thing. We do a life review. We see everything we did wrong. We feel it the way other people felt the pain. And then it's over and we're all in bliss. And there's no hell how much you want to bet you've been lured you've been lied to you go ahead and anchor your faith and hang your hat on that light show on that presentation and uh, see how far it's going to take you on the final day the day of judgment